What is up guys, Austin Nerd Show here, and today we're reviewing Star Wars The Last Jedi. So we just got done seeing it, so now we're going to talk about it, obviously. So the first half will be spoiler free, and then we'll talk about some spoiler type stuff in the second half. So first off, we'll start out um, with my opinion. So first of all, I'd probably say I like the movie. It's hard to tell with movies, especially like Star Wars, you know, something that's so big and grand and important to me that it's hard to just judge it right away. If I did, I would say I liked it. But there are some parts that I'm like confused about or whatever. But I'd say overall I liked it and probably upon seeing it more as with all the Star Wars movies. I like it more and more as I see it. So it'll probably be a, a good movie for me. So I'd have to say out of a rating I'd probably get it like probably a 9 or an 8.5 out of 10. I don't know exactly how to rate stuff. But it's definitely on the upper stuff. I really enjoyed it. But as I said there's stuff that would bring it down some. So that's why I don't know exactly how to rate. Because I don't want to obviously take it down too low. But I don't, it's not a perfect 10, obviously. Um, so some stuff that was on, obviously we, it picks up right after the last movie. So The Force Awakens. So it just picks up pretty much right after. So it just continues on the story, which I like that. Where with the, like, you know, original trilogy and stuff. And even with the prequels, there was like year gaps in between. Where with this, it's pretty much right after. So I really enjoyed that part of it and then so we of course trans through for the story of again continuing on and so I assume with the next movie or the last set of the trilogy it'll pick up right after as well so I like the can like storyline continuation stuff that goes on there um the characters I thought were really fun and enjoyable like I continue every time I see I've like Ray grows more and more I'm out the first time like first time I saw The Force Awakens I was kind of iffy I was like I don't know if I'll like her or not but every time I'd watch it since then I'd start to like her more and then after seeing this movie I really enjoy her a lot I think Kylo is a very complicated character like he's very enjoyable and I like the actor and stuff that does it but his just character which it's supposed to be is very like it flip-flops a lot kind of thing like on what he's supposed to be doing or whatever um, but I really like the characters. A lot of surprises happen throughout the movie, at least to me. Stuff I didn't expect, which I guess that's, you know, kind of makes for a good movie. Keep stuff suspenseful and switching all the time and it just keeps stuff entertaining and everything. Um, so it took a lot, takes some turns I didn't expect and some stuff happens. Um, but overall, I thought it was really fun and enjoyable. Um, I definitely want to see it again, obviously, with all stores. I've seen them, you know, hundreds of times probably between them all. And so I just, I definitely want to see this again before I can make a firm judgment. But for this video, I'll definitely say what I said. Probably about the 8.5 or 9 out of 10. What was your opinion, bro? I was impartial to the film, really. Uh, it wasn't a great movie, but it wasn't bad at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, like, like I said, I liked it more than I didn't. But there were some parts that I was just like, I don't understand what what's going on or anything and stuff. Like, it was kind of confusing. But, um, so... Um, would you obviously probably recommend people see it, obviously? I'd say say it, or see it, sorry. Um, I will say though, like, because you know, people are always, especially with this movie, it's all like, you know, people have got to either like stay off um, social media and stuff like that so they don't get spoiled. I don't really know of anything that can be, like, I know there is some stuff that can be spoiled, but I don't think anything big was revealed or like that I was expecting to have to but you know blow up the internet or make people you know mad that they didn't see it first um right away or whatever but you'll definitely want to see it pretty soon because obviously people are going to start talking about stuff that does happen but um so there's no like huge rush like to go you know first day like today but you'll want to see it probably within the first couple weeks before you know you get the story spoiled to you or whatever but as i said nothing at least in my opinion that i don't remember big really happens that's you know part of the big questions that were left after the force awakens so i think that's probably gonna be i don't know of anything else to talk on like i said the characters were good but there's so many characters in this movie and it builds upon uh, more of the characters and stuff so obviously you get more of poe dameron um you get a lot more luke obviously than the last movie you have princess leia in there you get um snoke general hux um can't try and think about their characters and you get introduced some to some new characters and stuff but it's uh, just a um a barrage of all these people at you at one time and it's you don't get much time with people individually except for luke and ray on the island that we saw them last time so that's probably it for the spoiler free part so now we're going to talk to spoiler talk about spoilers so if you were watching this you know see if, uh, what you know an opinion on the movie that's the first part. So now we're going to talk about spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, be sure to, you know, leave it so stuff doesn't get spoiled for you. So we're going to talk about spoilers right now. 
So I don't know exactly what Talked About was. So this movie was two hours and 30 or so minutes long. So, and to me it was in like an action pack. Like there was stuff throughout the whole thing. So it's hard to like, you know, go through each individual part. So I'll just kind of start places and move along. So the first one that I was talking about that was a, like kind of like surprised or shocked me or was like a, like I forget what they call it, but like um, it kind of like uh, switches. I don't know how to just what the proper word is. But the fact that General Snoke died. I was very surprised because I thought he was going to be, you know, like the big bad guy throughout the movie. So, you know, I assume he would die, but in the next movie. But the, how he just dies like halfway in the middle of this movie really surprised me. And I did not expect that at all. And I was kind of disappointed because I thought actually seeing him and the way he looked and, you know, stuff. It was very interesting because it looked like he had the force. Or, I mean, I'm pretty sure because he shot lightning from his hands and he was able to pull the lightsaber and stuff. So I assume he has the Force, but we don't get any explanation of who he is or how he learned about the Force or got any of that stuff. Which, I mean, doesn't really need to, but usually with, you know, with like the Jedi and the Sith and stuff, usually there's a person and then they train another person. And so it's like, I don't know who he is and we never got any explanation of if he is somebody from the past or anything like that. Like I said, I assume we probably would be because I saw a thing about Snoke's identity revealed. So I'm like, oh, he is somebody. But then this movie doesn't tell you anything about that. So I don't know exactly who he is still. We don't know anything. And now he's dead. And so he just got chopped in half by Kylo Ren with Rey's lightsaber. Which I thought was really cool how he did that. But um, I just, like I said, am very surprised that that happened. Um, another thing is that it went to reveal Rey's parents. And it's um, found out that your parents were just normal people normal average everyday people which is normal I mean there's a lot of Jedi stuff that just had normal parents and stuff um, but you know the whole big hype and everything was like oh who's raised parents it's got to be somebody um, and they just reveal that it, she was just traded for money or whatever and stuff to the people or to the guy on Jakku and everything so that was kind of disappointing that we didn't find out anything but I still don't I personally don't feel that's the whole story because of how she has a connection with uh, Kylo. Like their whole connection of how they can like see each other when they're nowhere near each other and stuff. It reminds me a lot of Harry Potter with Voldemort and Harry how they could like see into each other's mind and stuff like that. That's what that reminded me of the whole time because they'll like you know one will be in one place one will be in the other and they'll be able to like see each other where no one else can and they'll talk to each other and stuff. So there's got to be something stronger in there of a connection at least in my opinion that makes them connected somehow but I don't know what and by that there shouldn't be any form of connection because you know Luke and Leia could like talk to each other but through like their senses or whatever and stuff but they couldn't actually like see each other um so that was kind of shocking that we didn't get or that revealed or anything but to me this movie wrote was overall in a lot of ways kind of like Empire Strikes Back where it's definitely like the downturn of the movie so you know um you had, like, in the original trilogy, you had the Death Star destroyed, and so it's like, hey, we're on a happy, you know, we're going to get back in power, and then the Empire Strike Back took the movie back down, or the universe or whatever, back down, and then brought back up with Return of Jedi. This did similar, but it started to pick up at the very end with more hope or whatever for the galaxy and everything. Um, so I thought that was interesting, but it, like, there was a lot of death, which I... Not really surprised, but kind of surprised at the same time that they showed as much death as they did. But you just had all sorts of different people dying and stuff. And how Princess Leia so supposedly died with the attack on the cruiser ship. But then she somehow with the force pulled herself back into the ship and they were able to save her and stuff. Which I thought was just complete crazy. And she reminded me of a witch when she was flying back into the ship and stuff. But that was crazy. And then of course we get the um, new lady that takes over for her while she's gone or supposedly dead because they thought she was which was Laura Dern from Jurassic Park which I saw that she was in the movie and played a character but I didn't know exactly what she'd be and so she like takes over and um she ends up in the very end you know taking the sh uh, their big cruiser ship and <laughs> which is really cool because she's you know the whole time having a conflict with Poe where they're like butting heads of being in control and wanting to, to do stuff but she ends up, you know, and then staying behind with the ship to be able to keep it, you know, going on and stuff. So it distracts the First Order. And then she turned the ship around and just jumped in the hyperspace and just completely drove through all of the First Order ships. And that was super cool. I always wanted to see or know what would happen if 
someone jumped in the hyperspace into somebody, and now we got to see what happens. But so she sacrificed herself there. The one of the parts I didn't really much understand and didn't like was the whole Finn and Rosie part. So they go off to try and find some hacker and stuff, and so they went to like some like casino location type place and stuff where there's you know gambling and hate like horse racing type stuff. I didn't really understand that because to me nothing really got accomplished there. I just besides their friendship, but like I didn't understand because they went there to find a certain guy that Maz Kanata sent them after, and they didn't end up find that guy. They found somebody else, and then of course once he helps them out or whatever, or tries to help them out, he turns on them and stuff. And so it was like, what was the whole point of that in the first place? And they never got what they were supposed to do accomplish in the first place. So it was just kind of pointless to me. But I guess it just helped fill out that runtime and stuff in the story. I think the it did kind of help progress the story because it introduced you to the Benicio Del Toro character. But, which, I, I mean, didn't like his speech that yeah, he, he had. Yeah, he had like a stutter every now and then. Yeah, and it was, like it was weird. But they're almost kind of setting him up like a Han Solo character. Well, I could see, I could understand that if like in the next movie he's in it more, but by his character I didn't see him big enough to be in more than just this movie. So that's why it's confusing. But if it is, you know, maybe he could come back in the next movie and, then, and be play a bigger part and then it'd be, you know, make more sense. But in the context of this movie, I didn't understand it very much. But it also introduced us to the kid oh. that at the very end of the movie is a force wielder. Yeah, he says he pulled the broomstick. I didn't see I just saw him pick up a broomstick and start sweeping the ground. But I know he had like a little watch type thing on that. It showed earlier it was roses ring. yeah she had a ring or i thought it was a race or watch but it was a ring that she like push a button and open up and show the rebellion logo and stuff and so he had that and he did it and then he held up the broomstick kind of like a lightsaber and stuff so kind of showing that he's like the next generation because they're talking about there at the end that what they did there on crate was and or whatever just standing up against the first order would build hope throughout the galaxy and, you know, rise up a new rebellion or resistance force. Um, so that's kind of interesting how yeah, that little kid will be funny to see if we, or fun to see if we see him again or if it's just reference to or something like that. Continue on with the death stuff. So we got to see Captain Phasma back again. So we do see that she did um, survive the explosion of the planet in the last movie. And so she is back in this movie, but at this time, what I assume to be she dies this time, because she falls down through the floor into a pit of fire and stuff like that. So I assume she's dead, but we don't know no, no since she survived last time she somehow. She did take a full-on blaster shot, and it just bounced off her yeah, armor. So. so yeah, her armor was like bulletproof, which I did like that, or whatever, because it yeah, just bounced off. So I was like, that's kind of cool that her armor is not just the all like silver or like chrome or whatever that she actually is like bulletproof kind of so i thought that was kind of cool which makes me go back which i know it was kind of different but in the uh, force awakens when finn had the like gun pointed up under a helmet like i wonder now like obviously i know she probably has you know like is vulnerable there but if he you know would have shot her if it would have done any damage to her that's just something that popped into my head um, but then, of course, we got all the Luke stuff on the planet that he's unaware, him and Ray, where he um, refuses to train Ray, and so we get into the backstory of what happened between him and Kylo. And so first off, we get, I think, like, Kylo shows a flashback or something, and it shows that Luke was trying to kill him, and so he fought back against Luke and ended up destroying. That's how he got separated off and became what he became well then we get luke's side or whatever where luke was worried about it and he was gonna kill or attack kylo but then he decided not to but then at that point kylo saw him and thought you know oh he's trying to kill me so they fought or whatever and then that's how it all happened so luke is kind of like flipping back like in mentally or internally whatever flipping back and forth of you know or has like uh conflict within him of the the struggles between the good and the bad and you know last time we saw him in the original trilogy he was you know pretty much all good it was mentioned that he had you know some bad stuff that yoda was trying to like you know warn him of and everything but he was pretty much just all good until he like 
or especially like when he went all out on Vader in the uh, Return of the Jedi, but then he was able to stop himself before he killed Vader and stuff like that. Uh, but in this time, he's you know worried about the dark side and everything of taking over, and especially with what he senses in Rey and stuff of her possibly doing that and stuff like that. So he's like refusing to train her and stuff. But then he eventually gets in when she I think like sees how powerful she is or something. So he decides to like go ahead and help train her and stuff. And so they're trained together, and then. Uh, she ends up taking off to go and try and help her friends and stuff and we get introduced to the porgs at, On that island stuff too, which is kind of funny It was fun seeing Chewbacca trying to get ready to eat a porg and they're just kind of looking at him like you killed our friends And then their connection with him throughout the movie of always being around him and annoying him and stuff like that um, But then she takes off and then eventually a little bit later towards the very end obviously we see Luke come in and he's like looked all different. He's like beards like been dyed or something. So that should have been first hint. He had his lightsaber back, um, which it got destroyed. But when Kylo and Rey were um, fighting each other after they killed Snoke and all the his guards and stuff, they were fighting with each other because Kylo was trying to get Rey to come with her, and she was trying to get him to come with her or whatever. The whole trying to get each other to come with like to join the light side or the dark side, but they refused. So the lightsaber broke in half and stuff. And then you see Luke come in at the towards the end, and he has lightsaber, and I'm like, how do you get the lightsaber if they had it and it's broken but then at the very end we find out that he wasn't there the actual whole time on crate and so kylo was fighting just a ghost or like a form of him doing what kylo and ray were doing with each other whatever where they could be in each other's presence without being anywhere near each other and stuff and so that's what he was doing with kylo the whole time and then of course though that eventually leads to his death which i mean i assume he disappears spoiler yeah spoiler but that's the spoiler part so he disappears, so I assume obviously he's dead because it happens like uh, Obi Wan Kenobi did, where he just kind of like disappeared and stuff. But all he wasn't anywhere to die, though. I mean, I, I understand like the exertion of all the power and stuff to get himself to be there to fight with Kylo and stuff. But I don't see why he just died or whatever. That didn't really make much sense to me. But so that leaves since he's gone now. That's what leaves Rey as the, I guess, technical last Jedi. Even though we have Leia, who does have force powers, because she was able to pull herself in from outer space into a ship. And then if that kid did pull the broom, he would have force powers and stuff. So she's, I guess, could technically not be the last Jedi, but in terms of the movie and stuff, she is the last Jedi left. And so then another part I want to bring up, which was kind of cool, and I really enjoyed this, was we got to see Yoda again. Of course, he's supposed to be in, like, the spirit form, which to me they didn't do a good job because I did like, though, they brought back the puppet Yoda instead of the CG Yoda. At least it looked like the puppet version. It looked exactly like it. And so I like that they brought it back, but it just had, like, a blue glow around it. It looked just like the normal puppet, just with a blue glow on it, like someone highlighted it or whatever with blue, bringing him back. And so he, of course, talked to Luke and talked, like, I'd say kind of like some sense into Luke or whatever about Ray and everything and connecting her the way she is with how he was and stuff. So I like that whole thing, bringing back Yoda and everything. And I don't really know of anything else. Did you have anything to bring up, bro, that you wanted to say? Uh, I did want to say that when Luke died, it was reminiscent of when Yoda died, how he just yeah. kind of went peacefully. Yeah, it's like how Obi-Wan did too. Like they, well, Obi-Wan... Like, Obi-Wan got sliced in yeah. half, but... Well, he, like, disappeared before he got sliced in half. But, yeah, Yoda just lay down in bed, and then he just disappeared and stuff. So I don't know if, like, if Jedi, if they, like, become so strong enough with their powers and stuff that they can have the power to, like, kill themselves or something and, like, you know, make themselves disappear or something. I don't know. But, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, very similar and stuff with Yoda and... And Luther. then... Two other things that I thought were interesting was in Luke's telling of what happened with uh, Kylo Ben Solo, yeah. the second time around he told Rey that uh, Kylo took some of the Jedis with him that he was training, and I'm wondering if those aren't the guards for Snoke. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think if they are or not, yeah. but what I thought was interesting is their armor that they had on was able to stop the lightsabers from slicing through it. Yeah, they, they were interesting because they had all different weapons. So, of course, they're the guys that are in all red. So, it's kind of like the um, Emperor's guards they had. 
but these are the Praetorian guards and so they have like armor on and then they all different weapons some had like a staff with a blade on it some had a whip some had swords and they all had like electricity like red electricity pulsing through them and stuff that allowed them to fight with like against lightsabers and stuff but yeah, I do remember Kylo like touched one or something when they were like holding together or something and it didn't do anything I would assume, in my opinion, that the students that he took with him would became the Knights of Ren. So I thought we'd maybe get to see that or some reference to that, but we didn't. But that could always be in the next part or something since it's going to be, you know, the last hurrah or whatever for the movie. So we may bring it in as that's a part that Kylo brings in to help him to go to fight against the Resistance and stuff like that. I don't know for sure. Um, but I don't know if anything else. So I did have one more thing I wanted to touch on. When you were talking about Yoda showing back up, it was when Luke was trying to burn the sacred tree to the Jedi yeah. that held the way of the light. Um, and they were going to burn it and get rid of all the books that were written on their religion. And at the very end of the movie, Rey opens a drawer in the Falcon and the books are in it. Yeah, so like when they go to leave the planet, you, it shows her putting something in the drawer and she's like closing the drawer. And so I assumed, it, I don't know, was the light, wasn't it the lightsaber or something maybe? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, it showed her like putting it in there, shutting the drawer. And then at the very end as they're leaving it, shows her, um, some. I think uh, Finn opening the drawer to pull out a blanket or something. And the books are in there. And so Luke was worried about the, um, or wanting to destroy this tree and stuff. That was a part of like the, I think like the Tree of the Wills or something like that is what it's referenced to. And like, I think it was like the Clone Wars show had all that stuff about the trees and everything containing like the Force and stuff. And it had like these sacred uh, Jedi texts or books in there. And um, he was wanting to destroy and stuff because of not being whatever. Or I don't know what you like, telling what the truth or whatever and stuff like that. And, uh... So, but Ray has them the whole time, so they do survive on, which, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, so with Leia, I thought, she, I just would pretty much assume she would have died at some point in this movie since Carrie Fisher is no longer around to, you know, carry on the role and stuff. But they had her survive the whole movie, which was interesting to me that, like I said, I assume she would have just died. Like I said, I thought she did it at one point, but then she somehow used the force and brought herself back. I thought everything. she was going to sacrifice herself and stay with the ship, but... Yeah, or something like that. But yeah, she ended up surviving the whole movie. So I don't know what they're going to do next time, if it's just going to be like a so many to so much time later or something, and she would have died in, be in between that time or something. I don't know. But... I don't know of anything else left to say, though. Of course, there's a whole lot of stuff to talk about in the movie, but I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. But I guess that'll probably be it for now. So if you enjoyed this, please let us know in the comments down below. Let us know what you thought of the movie, whether you enjoyed it or didn't, or any whatever opinion you have, let us know in the comments below about it. But don't forget to subscribe to see more videos, and we'll see you next time.